former nonprofit organization, and I've been there about 14 months, a little less than a year and a half. And it's just been such a great experience for me, an opportunity to learn a lot. The Home Front Cares was set up in 03 by two Vietnam veterans who, um, their thought was no matter what you think about deploying to Iraq, let's make sure that our soldiers and families are supported unlike they were during Vietnam. And I think we've been able to do that because it doesn't matter what you think, we still need to support those who support us and our country. Since our inception, um, we were probably supporting 70% of active duty soldiers, and the Department of Defense has done a much better job of identifying needs and trying to support soldiers and families, but what we see now is that well over 70% of our assistants, and besides greeting soldiers and helping with memorial costs, we offer grants to, to military families and veterans service members throughout the whole state, doesn't matter what branch, who've been impacted by deployment. But what we're seeing now is that well over 70% of our support is going to veterans. And it's going, as we all know, it's going to get worse. And so when I was trying to think of some reflections to talk about, um, I, I came up with a couple that I think our community should ask itself. Um, one, what will our community, how will they respond to the perceived drawdown if we announce that the war in Iraq has ended? So what does that mean? Does that mean that our job is over with and we, we don't need support for our veterans or, or military? And I think everyone knows that that's not true. Um, as we start to push people out of the Army and out of the military, one of the average persons that you're going to see is someone who's given 12 or 14 years of their life to the military. They're in their early 30s, making a pretty good, decent income, and they, they know what their job is every day. And all of a sudden, they're going to be pushed out of the military. They won't be eligible for a single benefit unless maybe they're injured, and then they can get some disability. So they're not eligible for anything, and we know what our economy is like right now, and they won't be able to find jobs. And it has an impact on all of us, every single one of us. And the Home Front Cares, I've been able to hand a check to a veteran living in a storage unit. I can't imagine going home and drawing my storage unit down and there's no light coming in and that's where I get to live after serving. Um, you know, our veterans now are becoming homeless much more quickly than they did during the Vietnam era. And our economy is, is part of that. And so there's some unique challenges. You know, it's not our father's war anymore. 90% of today's seriously wounded are surviving. Back in previous wars, they wouldn't have survived. And there's a unique set of challenges that we have before us as a result of this. Whether we like it or not, or it's right or wrong, or, you know, they were in a coma and all of a sudden they're here and now they have injuries and, and you know, what it, whatever the story, this is what we have right now. And so we have a unique generation that's coming before us. And because it is a volunteer service and only 1% serve right now, many people are unaware. And so my hope is for communication. My hope, we know the biggest challenge for veterans is integrating into the community. We have a great GI Bill, but many of those who go back to college drop out because they cannot relate to the person sitting next to them who is the mall shopper, you know, as someone described. So it, it's such a unique experience. And, you know, what I get to do is help them with emergency needs. Well, you know, I don't get to work with them in depth. I don't get to hear a lot of stories. But how can you heal your marriage? How can you heal your spirit? How can you heal your body? when you're worried about losing your home? How can you focus on anything else when you can't even keep your basic needs and dignity together? So I feel the Home Front Cares can help with human dignity and, and help connect them to resources and, and provide those emergency assistance. But you know what I had to get over when I first started? And I, I've been in the nonprofit realm working with all kinds of people for a long time. 
but my own biases. So I would ask you, what are your biases about our military and our community? When I have someone pulling up in a far nicer vehicle than I've ever owned who can't pay their rent, what's my bias about that? I have to stop and think that maybe this person can't make good judgments right now because they have a brain injury. Did I think about traumatic brain injury? Did I think about the fact that maybe while they were deployed, one of their family members misspent all of their money? I had an active duty Air Force soldier come back and the minute he walked in the door, his wife left him and the two little boys. And she hadn't paid any bills while he was gone. They come back and they face many challenges. What are my biases? Did I even stop to think about the impact of five, six, 10, 11 deployments? What about the children? They don't know dad. I interviewed a veteran recently, his name is Randall. And what was unique for me was that after I interviewed him and the home front cares bought him lunch and I spent a lot of time with him, I saw him a week later and he didn't remember who I was. He had no idea who I was. It kind of was scary for me. It was, I couldn't, un, it was beyond my comprehension that he didn't know who I was. And he has to manage in the day-to-day -day world and, and remember what needs to be paid and when and what's going on. But when I interviewed him, what really touched me is he talked about he missed all of the first, all the first with his son. He missed the first girlfriend and the first this and the first that. And when he came back and his son came to live with him, he couldn't stay because Randall's been homeless six times in a short period of time. And so his son wanted to live with Randall and he wanted his son to live with him. And he was sharing a story about he had a night terror and his son tried to wake him up and his son had a look of fear on his face and it's because Randall swung at him. And he said, you know, touch my feet because nightmares don't attack your feet. There's so much. And what's your bias? What are your biases? Is it that they drive a nice truck so they don't deserve our support? What about the rest of our community who has been without a job? You know, a citizen who hasn't had a job in three years, they've never served, and they see all these benefits for the military. People want to, let's, let's get toys for children of deployed military, and let's have a food drive for the military. Let's deliver turkeys to our military. What's our community bias about that? Because there are people out there who are not in the military who have been suffering for a very long time and cannot pay their bills and can't eat and can't afford a Christmas. So do our military members deserve special treatment? Well, in a way, I think they do because they do have PTSD and traumatic brain injuries and they've missed all of the first of their children and they have sacrificed so much to keep our nation safe. But not everyone feels that they do deserve those. And so what biases are we struggling with as we try to help these folks integrate into our community? So, you know, these are a couple of things that I would like us to talk about and think about. And, and what can we do to, to bring military and the regular community together? 18, the Department of Defense tells us that 18 veterans a day commit suicide across our nation. And I've got a story, one of our volunteers, he was driving to get out of town, he works with veterans, and he volunteers all of his time. And he had um, the head of a nonprofit organization call him and she said, what are you doing? And he said, well, um, my wife Janie and I were, were gonna get out of Dodge for the weekend and they were in Castle Rock. And uh, she said, all right, well, I'll talk to you on Monday. And he said, well, what's going on? And apparently there was a woman who called and uh, her son is a wounded soldier and a wounded warrior. And her husband had just left her. And she said, I can't handle my son. I can't take care of him anymore. I am falling apart. I'm leaving and I don't care who takes care of him. And Dennis and Janie turned the car around and they found him in his wheelchair in the garage with the motor running and just waiting, because these people don't know where they fit anymore. We can't help them fit. We can find, there's room enough for all of us in this community if we're willing to dig deep enough and to look and to not just close our door or be fearful. And so, again, 
What, what is our perception in our community? What are our biases? Because the impact is going to be great on all of us. You know, if we push out, I guess they're going to be announcing the number of people that we're going to try to push out of the military. It's going to affect our unemployment rates here in Colorado Springs and across the nation. And it's going to have an impact on all of us, maybe crime, mental health issues. And so it is something that we need to look at and address. Um, so I've learned we need to communicate. Employers, they don't need to be fearful about hiring veterans. They need to be educated about hiring veterans. Uh, there was a story about a veteran who was, he just got hired, but he could not do the cubicle thing. And he was getting ready to quit. And they found that just putting a mirror around a mirror so he could see what was going on behind him made all the difference in his work environment. It's, it's education, it's asking, it's talking. Um, again, how are our children? So I guess I would challenge the group. Um, let's not be apathetic and decide that it's not our fight to help others. Through helping others, we help ourselves. And uh, we need to be engaged as a community, as an individual, helping just one. That's good. That's one that wasn't helped before. So don't be afraid to ask someone why they served and what that service meant to them and how it's impacted them and to share your story with other people. Um, but when I was, again, asked about reflections, I've learned a lot about my biases. I've learned a lot. And I ask the community to explore your own biases as well. <laughs>